Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes, and welcome to Volume 2 in our series on Three String Jazz Chords for the Guitar. Today we're going to look at an alternate shape for the seventh chord on the guitar, but we're still only going to use the sixth, fourth and third strings throughout this tutorial. You'll learn that by knowing alternate chord shapes, you can greatly reduce the amount of travel up and down the guitar fretboard where that travel is not required. You'll also learn to be able to mix and match the various chord shapes to give you the end result musical sounds that you desire. So let's get started and have a look at this new shape for the seventh chord. To better understand the origin of the new alternate seventh shape that I want to teach you today, I just want to take you through the most standard way of playing a C seventh chord on the guitar. This is the first way that we learn, the first shape that we learn on the guitar generally to play the chord C seventh. We have a standard C chord, we put our little finger on the B flat, which is on the third fret of the third string of the guitar. Now the four notes in a C seventh chord are C, E, G and B flat. If you actually have a close look at the standard C seventh shape on the guitar, we actually don't have a G anywhere in that chord shape. We've got a C, an E, a B flat, a C and an E. And I'm just leaving the sixth string out of the equation for the moment. Now there's no problem with that, as we learnt in Volume 1 of this tutorial, less is more. There's no requirement on the guitar to play every single note in every single chord that you play. And in fact if you do, many times you'll sound like a piano player who's playing with boxing gloves on. You'll just have so many notes there and you'll be so crowded out by the sounds around you in the band that your playing can become somewhat ineffective. However, if we take that shape and we put our third finger up on the G on the low E string, so the third fret of the sixth string, so that now we do have all of the notes in the C seventh chord, we end up with quite a big fat sounding C seventh chord. In this case, it has a G in the bass. Now, if I take my first finger out of the equation and look at the three notes I'm left with if I'm not allowed to play any open strings, I've got a G, an E and a B flat. So I don't have any C but that's not a problem. If I now use these fingers to play that same series of notes, so I've got my index finger now playing the E on the D string, the second fret of the fourth string, my second finger playing the low G up on the sixth string of the guitar, the third fret, and my third finger playing the B flat on the third string of the guitar, the G string of the guitar. I end up with that big fat sounding jazz seventh chord. And it's an alternate way to play a seventh chord to the one we learnt in volume one, this shape. So that's a G 7th chord there, and this is a C 7th chord, and G 7th, I'll go back now to C 7th, then back to G 7th, playing that same progression that we played in volume 1, I'll go up to D 7th, back to C 7th, and ending on G 7th. And notice I'm comping the chords as we did in volume one. I'm assuming if you're watching this tutorial that you've already been through all of the content in volume one in this series. If not, please do check that out because I won't be going over the same info again here in this session. So we discussed comping in volume one. That sound, short and detached. Have a look at how close G 7th, C 7th and D 7th now become on your guitar. You'll remember in volume one we were chasing around all over the place from the third fret up to the eighth fret to play C 7th. Now we can stay basically in the same position on the guitar. This becomes this. 
hardly move our left hand at all, just one fret. Now, the thing you've got to understand is that the name of the seventh chord in this shape is actually silent. It's based on the A string. Had we put our finger here on the A string, that's the name of the chord. That's the note C. However, we are sticking with just playing the sixth, fourth, and third strings on the guitar. So it's an imaginary lead note there. We're not playing it, but as far as thinking out where the chord shape has to be to play the seventh, you've got to imagine that you are pressing down the fifth string on the guitar. In other words, this is D seventh, because if we did play the fifth string like that, and you can see I'm alternating on the bass now, that note would be D. Therefore, the shape remains a D seventh. Just like if we go back to our cowboy C chord, put our little finger down and play C seven, and then don't play C in the bass. Remove the C from the bass and play G in the bass. Here, we've still got C down here on the second string, but remember this whole concept of jazz chords is we're not using the two skinny strings at all. We're just using the sixth, the fourth, and the third strings. So that's a C seventh, even though we really don't have a C in that chord if we rule out this, the, the, the skinny strings. We just change the fingers to that shape. And if you're looking, for example, to play an F seventh chord using this shape, you think of where on the A string the note F becomes. And that would be here on the 8th fret of the guitar, that's an F. So we then play this shape, that's an F 7th. If you were looking for an F 7th, that's an F 7th in the volume 1 shape. And you can hear that those chords are one and the same. Different inversions, but both definitely an F 7th chord. Okay, I want to now take you through the exact same 12 bar blues that we did in volume one at 190 beats per minute playing along with the metronome, but now using these shapes, swapping between the, the available seventh shapes and sticking on our first five frets of the guitar rather than having to bounce around up here to the 10th and 8th frets of the guitar. So I'll go through slowly those chords Remember, it is four strums on G7, four on C7, and then eight on G7, eight on C7, eight on G7, four on D7, four on C7, eight on G7. So just getting you used to not having to travel up and down the neck. Now, musically, you may still choose to do that because this sounding C7 is a different sound to this one. It's a different series of notes in different relative pitches to each other. So those two, you might want to interchange between the two. But for the purpose of this exercise, I want you to master this new alternate seventh shape. So we'll put our metronome on 190 beats a minute. We'll give ourselves two bars count in, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, G seventh, C seventh, G seventh, C seventh, G seventh, D seventh, C seventh, G seventh. Let's do all that again. G seventh, C seventh, G seventh, C seventh, G seventh. D seventh, C seventh, G seventh. How did you go? If you were able to keep up with me at 190 beats a minute and accurately change between those two alternate jazz chord shapes for the seventh chord on the guitar, then your technique has really come a long way insofar as being able to practically use the three string jazz chord shapes on the guitar. I just want to round out this volume two tutorial by introducing you to the concept of a turnaround. Now a turnaround is just a chord progression 
that links verse 1 and verse 2 or the chorus and the verses of a song together. It's a very common tool that songwriters use and certainly in all types of music, turnarounds are evident. We've just done an exercise that basically repeated a chord sequence that was 12 bars in length, but we played it two times in a row and we played it absolutely identically both times. What I want to do is using the chord shape from the volume one tutorial, our original seventh shape, in between our first and second laps through that 12 bar blues, I want you to play this turnaround, this sequence of chords. Two strums on G seventh, then slide up to where that shape becomes B flat seventh. So in other words, the sixth fret of the guitar. The point on the guitar where your index finger on that shape is playing the note B flat. Two strums on B flat seventh, take that back one fret, two strums on A seventh, and take it back another fret, and two strums on A flat seventh. So that little four chord sequence, G seventh, B flat seventh, A seventh, A flat seventh, when put together, is what's called a turnaround. So I'll just play it slowly. Here's the turnaround. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so it takes two bars to, to complete the turnaround. And it sort of takes the listener's ear in a new direction. It's a bit like driving down a, a one-way street and having to do a U-turn at the end of the street and come back up. You've had a change direction. So let's have a listen to how that turnaround would fit in that blues. And I'll just play the last part of the blues from the D7 back to the C7 to the G7, then the turnaround. So D7, C7, G7, B flat 7, A7, A flat 7, G7. Let's put our newfound skills to the test. I'll put the metronome on at 190 beats a minute. We'll play the same 12 bar blues that we've learnt earlier in this tutorial, the one that alternates between the two available jazz seventh chord shapes. And we'll also add in the turnaround that we've just discussed in between verses one and two of the 12 bar blues. Remember a two bar counting. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four. G seventh, C seventh, G seventh. C seventh, G seventh. D seventh, C seventh, turn around. G seventh, C seventh, G seventh. C seventh, G seventh. D seventh, C seventh. G7. I hope you've enjoyed learning just a little bit more about your guitar fingerboard and the available chord shapes that you can use in a variety of musical styles. As always, keep in touch via my website. That's www.brianhays.biz. That's B-I-Z. Drop me an email if you have any basic questions about playing the guitar. And subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you're kept updated as I load new videos on the various instruments that I play and teach. Bye for now.